Hi everyone, Marin here for Learn Fun. Thank you so much for joining me. As you can see, today we are the witnesses of a theft. The neighborhood doggies have joined forces against the humans to steal some delicious grilled sausages. So let's have a look at the supplies I'm going to use. We have the cute dogs from Simply Celebrate Critters, the splatters and puddle from Berry Rainy Day, a doggy from Furry and Bright, several images from Let's Barbecue, the smoke image from A Creature Was Turing, the words It's Time To from Terrific Day Add-on, we have the Magic Picture Changer die set, the largest stitched rectangle stackable die, and the Henry's ABCs die set. So, when I make a Magic Picture Changer card, I always start by making the background and I like to place all the different elements on my panel. This way, I get a precise idea of how the scene will look like. And on this particular card, placing the images and dice first is helping me divide the scene in several parts. I'm using a pencil to do that. At the bottom and towards the barbecue, we'll have two grass borders. Behind the barbecue, we'll have a wooden fence. And on the top part, we will have a simple cloudy sky. I set the images aside and taped my 5.5 by 4.25 inches Bristol panel to my glass surface. And I'm going to start with the grass borders. I did two pencil marks to make those borders. And I'm placing the stencil on the one at the top. And I'm going to cover this whole section with Modlon Oxide Ink. Now I'm placing the stencil on the other pencil mark. And I'm going to add more contrast by applying Rustic Wilderness Oxide Ink. I'm applying the ink at the very bottom of the panel. And I mix the colors using my Modlon Blending Tool. Next, I'm covering the grass section I just created and I'm using Rustic Wilderness Oxide Ink again. I'm applying it all along the grass sprigs and then I use my Modlon Blending Tool again to make a nice transition between the colors. And after that, I will add texture to make them less flat. So the grass section are done. Now we're going to make the wooden fence. And to do so, I covered the grass borders. And here I'm adding washi tape on the last pencil mark to mark the top of the fence. To make this wooden fence, I'm starting by applying tea dye distress ink on the whole section. This will create a nice base. And now I'm going to add a wood plank effect using a skinny stripes stencil along with vintage photo oxide ink. Once again, I'm covering the whole section with a little bit more ink on the bottom part. And then once the stencil is removed, I'm going back with the same ink to add more shadows on that bottom section. Now we need to finish that fence. I turned the stencil and placed it to create one horizontal stripe at the top of the fence. I'm masking above and below that stripe so I can add vintage photo oxide ink. But it wasn't dark enough to me so I brought some ground espresso oxide ink to darken the top of the fence a little bit more. So let's lift the stencil and our wooden fence is done. I'm not adding anything else. I think it looks very nice just as it is. And now let's move on to the last section of our panel. I'm going to create a very simple sky using the cloudy stencil along with tumble glass and salty ocean oxidings. I'm applying tumble glass first all along the stencil. Next, I add a little bit of salty ocean. And then I come back with my tumble glass blending tool to mix the inks.
So the background panel is complete. Now let's cut the frame out of it. I'm making sure that the notch on the die is at the bottom. I line up the edge of the die with the edge of the paper. Washi tape to secure everything and then to the die cutting machine. And here we go. I'm keeping the small square. We're going to need it later in the process. But now it's time to work on the interactive mechanism. I cut a long bristol panel for the pocket element and a short one for the moving piece. First thing to do is to trace both windows on the papers using a pencil. And as you can see, the dies are upside down with the windows on the upper part, just because I wanted the pull tab to be at the bottom of the scene. Now let's do some stamping and masking. I placed the long panel in my MISTI tool with the barbecue stamp on the square window. I made sure that the legs of the barbecue were lined up with the bottom edge of the window and I added the sausage stamp. I'm picking up the sausage stamp with the door of my MISTI tool and I stamp it twice just to get a nice impression. Now we're going to mask the sausage. I use the coordinating die to cut a mask. And to be sure that the mask is positioned correctly on the image, I use the lights above my desk to see the sausage through the mask. This really helps to center the mask on the image. Next, I'm putting the barbecue back with a smoke image above it. And I'm stamping those two images again twice to get a nice impression. And just like before, I masked the images and off screen, I worked on the small panel. On this one, we only have the barbecue. So now we're going to color around those masked images. And to do so, we're going to use the square as a guide. So I place the square on the long panel right on the window. I'm bringing the grass stencil back and I align it with the grass on the square. Tape the stencil in place and remove the square. And now I can use the same inks as before to color below the barbecue. Next, I moved the stencil to protect the grass section. And now I'm adding tea dye distress ink on the upper part to start making the wooden fence. I'm putting the square back in place, all lined up with the stencil. And now let's bring the skinny stripes stencil back. I tape it and remove the square so we can add vintage photo oxide ink just like we did on the background panel. And we're done for now with the long panel. Next step is to repeat the same process on the short panel.
and the inking is all done. Now let's peel the masks off to reveal our work. And it already looks super cute. Now, because I masked the images, as you can see here, some of the lines are not connected. But I'm going to fix it and make this as it was one single image using my black memento pen. And here we go, perfect. Now let's color the images using my alcohol markers. Like I said at the beginning, the paper I stamped those images on is Stratmore Bristol cardstock and alcohol markers blend very nicely on that paper. And our first barbecue is done. Off screen, I colored the other one. And now I'm going to color all the other images, starting with the cute doggies. From left to right, I'm coloring them to be a Jack Russell, a German Shepherd, an English Bulldog, a Baby Labrador, and a Shiba.
Now it's time to build our magic picture changer element. I'm placing the dies on the panels and I make sure that the bottom of the window is aligned with the right and left legs of the barbecue. Some washi tape to keep everything in place and then to my die cutting machine. Now let's fold the long panel. I'm folding it in half right on the score line that the die creates and I'm folding the slim tabs on both sides as well. Next I'm going to add double sided tape on those tabs on the front and at the back just like so. I'm peeling the tape on the inside and I fold the tabs again to this time stick them to the panel and here we go. Next I like to add powder on the flaps and along the tabs and I also like to use my bone folder to rub the edges of the short panel. Doing those steps really help to get a smooth mechanism. Next I'm putting the short panel inside the pocket panel and I put the tab into the slot. Now I'm sliding each little flap into a slot one after the other just like so. I pull on the tab to interlock the flaps and the slots. Here I just make sure that the small panel is all lined up between the tabs. Now I can peel the backing papers of the tabs and fold the pocket panel to complete the mechanism. And I always like to play with it to make sure that it's working properly. Now let's add the frame on top of the pocket. I'm attaching it using double sided tape on the four edges of the frame and we can see that everything matches quite nicely. I'm going to stick the elements on the card base. I have added double sided tape at the back of the pocket and here I'm using the rest of the panel as a guide to attach the pocket. And now I just have to stick the rest of the panel and I'm using foam tape to be at the same height as the pocket. Now you can notice that we cannot see the corners of the barbecue. Same for the legs. I wasn't sure but it was a possibility. So to fix that I stamped and colored an additional barbecue. I cut the middle part and I'm attaching it on the panel with a dot of glue on each corner and on the middle leg as well and the illusion is perfect. Now let's bring the doggies back. I'm going to stick all the images on the panel using foam squares but first I need to make a small cut on the running doggy to put a sausage in his mouth. Now for our sentiment, I cut some letters to make the word pouty and I placed them above the dogs. 
and right above those letters, I'm stamping the words it's time to using black versafine ink. And now we can stick the letters. I cut them out of texture canvas orange cardstock and I backed those letters with white letters to create an outline and I'm using my tweezers to attach them more easily. And the final step, let's add the pull tab decoration. I cut it out of turquoise cardstock and I'm folding it and attach it at the end of the pull tab using liquid glue. And I'm adding the arrow that I cut out of yellow cardstock right in the middle. And that's it. Our cute and fun sausage rubbery scene is all done and I hope that you like it. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next video. Have an amazing day. Bye.